Yo guys, what's up? Today we're going to end Operation Barbarossa with the Battle of Moscow that commenced on October 2nd, 1941. But the Axis were severely slowed down by snowy rains called Rasputitsa that transformed the dirt roads into thick, unforgiving mud pools that sucked in everything, even mechanized infantry and panzer tanks. Instead of traveling dozens of miles a day, only a few miles could be covered. By November, the Germans were so stuck and worn down that Stalin felt confident enough to proceed with the annual military march through Moscow on November 7th, mocking Hitler and boosting Soviet morale even more. The autumn had not treated the Axis well so far. Stalin had ordered his government to evacuate to Samara on October 15, but the proud national secretary himself stayed behind, overlooking the situation with his new defense commander, Georgi Zhukov, just like Rommel, an expert at both attack and defense, who was appointed on October 12th. But one month later, on November 14th, all of a sudden the Axis troops were given a boost when temperatures dropped and the soggy mud froze, allowing them to cover far more distance and slowly move in on the Volga River. And the Kremlin. Stalin asked Zhukov for his honest opinion and got positive feedback. Zhukov assured Stalin a winter victory if he would make a deal with the Siberian combatants from the Far East and Far North districts. The invitation was sent to Siberia to come to Moscow's aid and for two more weeks the inexhaustible defenses managed to keep the Axis forces back in inhumane weather conditions, even with a German bridgehead across the Volga River. Also the troops coming from Leningrad were close to Moscow and even the Crimea had been conquered by Germany and Romania between October 18 and November 16. Starting October 30, they had also moved in on Sevastopol, a port in Crimea, with the help of the Italians under the command of Field Marshal Erich von Manstein. Between November 21st and 27th, von Rundstedt commanded the last breakthrough after the Battle of Rostov. But at the very end of November 1941, the Axis would receive their final blow in heavy snow and freezing temperatures. The troops from the far districts arrived in Moscow on November 28, and they unleashed hell on the belligerents. They attacked the Axis troops with ski raids and cavalry divisions with swords and introduced them to a whole new style of warfare, winter warfare. It's really impressive to see actual footage of the SMG gunners on skis coming down the hills and letting loose. In just a few days time they killed and captured hundreds of enemies, taking them on a death march into Siberia. By December 5th, General Guderian tried to persuade Hitler in person to abort the mission, but he was told not to worry about human lives and debriefed the same night. Without Guderian, the hopeless siege of Moscow crawled into the coldest winter of the 20th century, with 100,000 Germans exposed to frostbite and hundreds dying of hypothermia and pneumonia. Only 30% of the motor vehicles still worked. At the very start of January 1942, even Hitler was forced to abort Operation Barbarossa and the Soviet campaign to leave Moscow behind and to safeguard the brand new frontier of Nazi Germany, hundreds of miles inside the Soviet Union. For 1942, the main focus would be on Sevastopol and Stalingrad in the south, the Jew hunt in the new regions of Ukraine and Belarusia, and even more, the research into new high-tech weapons such as the aerial torpedoes. They were developed in a secret facility in the Baltic Sea called Torbedownia and could be dropped into sea by low-flying aircraft. A new research facility was built in Peenemunde to develop V-2 ballistic missiles which cost millions of dollars and also V-1 flying bombs were being developed. Hitler had lost his faith in human infantry and wanted wonder weapons to continue his battle with Stalin and Great Britain. Also his 350 Type 7 U-boats would become infamous in 1942, sinking a total of more than 500 ships with their submarine warfare in the Atlantic, North Sea and Mediterranean. So this is where we end the year of 1941, where another alliance was formed right at the end. USA had been dragged into the war by Japan after an unannounced attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th. 
USA had declared war on Japan, Germany on USA, and Hitler agreed to a pact between the Japanese Imperial Army and the Axis members. However, it took Churchill a visit to the States to keep the support of the US industry and to join the fight in Europe as well. He even suffered a heart attack caused by stress and lack of sleep. It remained a secret for quite some time, but he recovered. See you on the next one, guys. Peace.